defensive back Alante Taylor to ask a question for Alante. Hit the raise your hand function and we will call on you. We'll start with Ben McKee, then we'll go to Teresa Walker of the Associated Press. Alante, uh, Coach Martinez a couple weeks back talked about how he recruited you uh, when he was here the first time. Just how has it been kind of getting to, to reunite with him and what was it like to, to go through a practice yesterday with him leading the way? Um, it was exciting, you know. Um, I felt like Coach Martinez had a good grasp what kind of coach he was when he was recruiting me. And uh, just seeing him talk to or recruit or Coach Cam Sutton and Rashawn Gaud and guys like that whenever I was a freshman. Um, so that type, same type of energy that you have when I was a recruit, um, he's the exact same guy now. And uh, it's just a blessing to be able to actually be on the team and actually get knowledge from him and uh, just hear tips on how to better my game. And, and Alante, how challenging have the last uh, two, three months been? Uh, you know, the, the coaching situation, uh, you've got a new coach in there now. There's been guys that have hit the transfer portal. Uh, it, it, to be in spring practice, is it nice to finally get back to football after everything that's been going on? And, and for, for you guys, how, how, what, what has it been like for, for the players themselves? Um, it's been a change. You know, I feel like if you – go to any school that has a new coaching staff. There's going to be a couple of changes here and there, and guys are going to be concerned about what's going to happen next. Um, but as a leader on this team, you know, we just made sure we held everyone together that was staying. And then the guys that left, we never dogged them out. You know, we told them just do what's best for them. Um, it feels good to be back on the practice field. We haven't played football since we played against Texas A&M. So it's been a very long time. Um, but it feels good to be out there with those boys and be with this new coaching staff and uh, just be able to grasp how things are supposed to be ran with this coaching staff than how they were last year. So it feels pretty good. David Ubbin and David Pascal. Yeah, I want to tell you, uh, on the guys that have left, what has it been like to see the large number of guys that have left the program, and, and why do you feel like you guys have, have seen that happen? I mean, kind of like what I said earlier, uh, when there's a coaching staff changing, uh, a lot of people are going to go there in different ways, whatever they feel is best for them. Um, I kind of talked to everyone who did leave, and I just told them, like, we don't have any anything against those boys. Uh, I want them to be happy where they are, right? So – we didn't know what was going to happen here, and uh, I talked to those boys here and there, and they're happy where they are now, and I just tell them boys just work, and, you know, I'm just keep cheering, on, cheering them on. Sorry. Yeah, there's still a few players still in the portal trying to figure out where they're going to go, obviously mainly Quiveris and Henry. In the event those guys chose to come back, how would you feel like the team would feel about that? Um, we love those boys, you know. Uh, we've been to war with those boys. We've practiced with those boys. We've been winning games with those boys. Um, I talk to Crouch and I talk to Henry almost every other day now, you know, and if they were to decide to come back, you know, we're welcome with open arms. But we have guys who are working hard now for us here for the linebacker room. And uh, I have a lot of faith in those guys. And, you know, like I said, if they would like to come back, you know, we'll open up with open arms. But the guys who are here, they're working really hard. And, you know, we're looking promising there. Alante is kind of a follow up of what you've just been asked. Did you ever consider leaving early? Did you ever consider the transfer portal? And, and why did you stay? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I thought about leaving. Um, I did talk to my parents about what they thought was best for me, uh, looking from the outside, looking in. But, you know, it really just came down to this is my home state. And I always say that. And that power team means a lot to me. Um, so whoever the new coaching staff was going to be, I was going to make sure that I stayed here as a leader as well. And I just kept the guys who wanted to stay here, keep those guys positive and know that, you know, we had good things coming for us. Um, and we didn't we shouldn't all just run from it and we should just stay here as a group. So I wouldn't necessarily say I looked to leave, but I did talk to my parents just to see what was best for me. And at the end of the day, the power team means a lot to me, and this is my state. So that's why I decided to stay. And as a real quick follow, did yesterday's practice have a fresh feel to it? Did it finally feel like this is you've turned all the pages of the last few weeks? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, we had so much fun yesterday, man. Uh, it's a little different here and there, but everyone's energy on the offense and on the defense and also with the special teams, uh, you know, it was just a vibe for us. Um, being able to start spring ball, like I said, we haven't played football since Texas A&M. So uh, it was really fun out there. Uh, a lot of guys were smiling. A lot of guys were getting coached up. A lot of guys were getting new things taught to them, and they weren't getting frustrated with it. So it was really fun just to be out there and laugh with those boys and compete. Rob Lewis and Jimmy Himes. Hey, Awante, just how would you describe, you know, Coach Banks and specifically as well as Coach Heupel and, and just the culture and and – you know, the attitude they're trying to instill into the program? Um, you know, a family, I would say. Uh, three things we talk about on the defense side of the ball, Coach Banks, is trust, urgency, 
you know, and just being able to um, go about our business the right way. Uh, Coach Hype was big on building that relationship and making sure that we can respond to, you know, adversity and respond to everything that we need to the right way. Um, Coach Banks, love Coach Banks, you know, he's a smart, uh, smart guy, good coach, and he understands his players. He wants to build those relationships with us. So, yeah. Alante, uh, one of the players that did enter the Portland return was Austin Poe. Just talk a little a bit about what it means to you that, that he did return and how he can help the team. Yeah, Pope, uh, Pope's been here for a, for a little minute now. Uh, he was here when I came in as a freshman. Uh, I have a really small relationship with Pope. We talk here and there. We joke a little bit. But um, it's big, you know, having a guy who has experience. Uh, he's played a lot of football here. You know, he's been through injuries. So anybody who has any injury issues, you know, just handling adversity and going to him, just see what to do from there. But um, Pope's a really good guy. Pope, Pope's a good tight end. You know, it's an additional to our offense. And I'm glad that he stayed so that we can just see what the future looks like with him. Also, uh, based on the pace of practice, I just wonder, do you do you feel like that this team is going to have to be in better shape than it was last year with the tempo the Coach Eichel's bringing? I'm sorry, can you re repeat the last part? Do you feel like you guys are going to have to be in better shape because of the tempo that Coach Heupel is bringing? Um, at the end of the day, college football, you got to be in shape in general, right? And we all know that Coach uh, Coach Heupel's offense is really fast. And being able to go against those guys uh, every single practice is going to get us in shape regardless, right? So come Saturdays, we'll be ready to play rather than a team that goes tempo or a team that doesn't go tempo. So we'll for sure get in shape just by going against those guys every single day. Um, I think it's a blessing you know, just being able to go up against a fast offense like that. So, you know, it makes your game a little bit sharper. Mike Wilson and Patrick Brown. Yeah, Alante, at what point this offseason or even before did you start realizing this was a team that you were probably going to be a key leader on? Um, I feel like I could be a key leader on this team my freshman year, actually, uh, when I had my first start. Uh, and then ha seeing just how those guys came up to me and was telling me, you know, positive things because, you know, it wasn't my best game. Uh, I feel like that was a time where I could step up into that leadership role. And uh, just seeing how the guys uh, revolved around me and then trusting in me as far as my attitude and how I carried myself each and every day was a time when I was like, okay, Alante, like these guys do look up to you no matter if you are a freshman. Um, I feel like that was the first point in time when I did. And then really this off season, you know, when all the changes happened with the coaching staff changing, a lot of guys came up to me and were just kind of seeing where my mindset was with everything. And then at that point, I was like, okay, Alante, like you really are a leader on this team. So it's like, what do you do next? So I just prayed about it. You know, I just stayed true to myself. And like I said, power team means a lot to me. So I try to keep as many guys as I could here. And you, you've had a lot of off the field experience with leadership councils, uh, events like that. What, what have maybe been the one or two most meaningful experiences you've had in that respect? Um, I got to be a part of a thing uh, we call it's called Ball Leaders. Um, it's a full year class that you take, you know, just learn different leadership skills. Uh, we find out ways to how we can correlate with sports and just make uh, people come closer together. Uh, that was for sure one of them. And then just being a part of the SEC Football Leadership Council and getting to go to that uh, meeting in Birmingham before COVID happened. And uh, just talking to different guys around the SEC and um, seeing their thoughts and things like that. Probably the main two things I feel like. Hey, Lante, I think between the time Coach Pruitt was uh, was let go and Coach Heupel was hired, Danny White, the new AD, came in and, and mm -hmm. met with you guys and kind of wanted some of y'all's feedback as players on what you guys wanted a new coach. You remember what some of those things were that you guys expressed to him? Um, and have you seen some of those things in Coach Heupel so far in the in the couple months he's been here? Um, I feel like the number one thing we wanted to make sure we uh, honed in on was a coach that was going to hold everyone accountable. Um, our last coach did the exact same thing. You know that we held everyone accountable, but we made it. To, we wanted to make sure that the new coach that came in, you know, kind of kept that same thing going and just held everyone accountable. That was the number one thing that we wanted to look for in our new head coach. And just by doing that, you know, we do hold each other accountable now, and it's actually one of our our values on our team now. And uh, us as leaders in our leadership council group that we have here, we just make sure we hold everyone accountable so that we can get everything done. Um, the best ability is accountability. So. Trey Wallace, then Eric Kane. Hey, uh, Alante, during the SEC basketball tournament, Greg Sankey actually brought up your name and, and talked about how you guys got the season done by you saying, you know, you'll, you'll test every single day as long as we can play on Saturday. 
Uh, to, to you, what was it like going through last season and, and to be called out by the commissioner like that? Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, it means a lot. It is a true blessing. Uh, Mr. Sink is an awesome guy. I'm just glad that I got to meet him in person. Uh, like I said, down there in Birmingham in our meeting. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we all want to play football. And whatever it took for us to play football, I wanted to let it be known that us as SEC players and guys on the uh, SEC Football Leadership Council, we were willing to get tested every single day if that's what it took for us to play football. Um, at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure that we didn't let the whole world change us by, you know, going home on lockdown, having to do virtual meetings on Zoom and things like that. The fact that we got to come back and we actually got to play football and get tested whenever we needed to get tested so we could play football is dope. And uh, shout out to Coach, I mean, not Coach, but shout out to Mr. Sankey for just trusting in us and uh, believing in us and doing everything that he could so that we could play football. Hey, Lonte, what did you think about uh, Bryce Thompson declaring for the NFL draft a couple months ago when he did? And did you guys maybe have any conversations about that uh, before he declared? And, and what's been the relationship between you two and since the uh, the process for him has begun? Uh, yeah, Bryce is my guy, man. Uh, I love Bryce to death. Um, right, actually, the last, what was it, maybe the last minute of the game against Texas A&M, uh, he came up to me. You know, he kind of shared a little tears. He was just saying, like, this was his last game and that he enjoyed playing with me and that, um, you know, he's just going to keep continue to look look at us and just make sure that we're doing right here. But to see the guy yesterday and see what he did in his pro day, um, conversating with him, you know, I'm very proud of him. And I tell him every time I see him, like, you know, you're one step closer. So uh, Bryce is my guy. I hate that we kind of parted ways now. But, you know, I wish him the best and I'm um, looking forward to what he does in the future. We'll conclude with Gustavo. Alonte, uh, how was, you know, first practice yesterday? I imagine you had a conversation with your fellow defensive back. I think, believe there are like four or five freshmen. How was the conversation, first interaction, you know, back on the field, back on the practice, especially with your fellow defensive backs? Can you, Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, can you repeat the last part? Of course. Uh, uh, Alante, uh, how was, you know, being back on the field yesterday, uh, being back in practice, especially being in contact again with your fellow defensive back? You know, there's four or five freshmen. How was your, you know, conversation, interaction with your fellow defensive backs in your first practice yesterday? Um, yeah, so our main goal yesterday was to be resilient, you know, to play fast and to get the fo to attack the football. Um, those are our three main goals as far as practice for yesterday. Um, you know, we also talked about communication, um, being a senior now, just kind of talking to those younger guys, like it was the first practice. It's a new start. It's a new era for us. So we had to take it one day at a time, one rep at a time. One thing we talk about here now is to be one to know, you know, so just be one to know each and every day. And eventually the days will add up. Thank you, Alante. We'll have Vela shortly.